If you're new here, my name is Kale. I'm a surfer and a filmmaker, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews, and more. So subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. What's up guys, it's Kale Brock here and today I've got a really special video for you because I've been coaching someone regularly for the last three months and we've had exactly nine sessions together and there's been a serious improvement throughout those sessions that I wanted to share with you and track and also explain how that progression occurred. I'm super proud of this girl because she has a really big commitment to surfing and absolutely loves it, which I think is one of the key determinants as to how you progress. Now, before we jump right in, I wanna thank everybody who joined my new Patreon membership page last week when we launched. It's really cool to see you guys in there checking out all the surf coaching analysis videos that's similar to the one that you're gonna see today uh, because I think it's a really cool way and um, intelligent way to progress your own surfing. So thanks so much, guys. Make sure you check it out via the link in the description below. Positioning was the first sort of element that we really wanted to address with this particular surfer because I knew that once she was in position and got a good wave that her skills were at a level where she could improve quite dramatically. Positioning and wave selection has such a massive impact on your surfing outcomes. It is absolutely key to progression, but it's also the hardest thing to teach and it requires a surfer to spend a lot of time out in the water. That's why this particular client's dedication to surfing was such a huge benefit to her progression because it wasn't hard to prescribe more surfing sessions in between our lessons. I was really encouraging the surfer, because she had a great takeoff and could paddle in quite well, to be at the steepest part of the wave whilst she was paddling in. This would give her the most speed and thus make flowing between sections and doing turns easier. Now there were some challenging moments, but also some big achievements like this particular wave here where she was able to even backdoor the section, which means taking off behind the peak and swinging past it. I also wanted to really work on the surfer's flow, speed generation technique. If a surfer constantly rides in that lower half of the wave or even the lower third, then they're going to constantly suffer from a lack of speed and this is going to inhibit them in their progress in the sport. That top third of the wave is where all the power comes from. And I was very vocal about finding that nice flowing rhythm from the very get go of each ride. Now initially there were some technique hiccups that I wanted to work on, especially the thrust component where the surfer wasn't really utilizing a low coiled spring position to come out of the bottom turn with. This lack of hip thrust and a slightly misdirected shoulder shrug was limiting her speed potential on rides. So we worked on it with the Smooth Star, my favorite surf skateboard, and eventually improved over time. Now there's a trick here, this offered a really nice carryover into her maneuver training as well because speed flow technique is actually really similar to maneuvers, it's just less directional change. I really wanted the client to work on her bottom turn, even if it was just a really small one to get her up into that top third of the wave so that she could enter the rest of the ride with as much speed as possible. Notice here how although the surfer generated a little bit of speed, her bottom turn wasn't powerful enough to actually propel her into the upper third of the wave. This is what we call the power zone. That's what I wanted to work on.
that's where things started to progress quite nicely. The surfer found some good rhythm and flow along each ride, and her bottom turn had, had improved quite dramatically. And those two ingredients I knew were setting us up to work on top turns, maneuvers where we come off the lip. This particular wave offered a really nice benchmark for us to compare to uh, in order to really work on those maneuvers. So our first step was working on that bottom turn, that coiled spring position where I actually wanted to encourage the surfer to start to experiment with allowing her body to shift off center. So that is not so over the board, but being comfortable with being off the board. And this is something we noticed that was actually present in her surf skate technique as well. Without allowing the body to come off center like that, a lot of our turning is dependent on our heels and toes as opposed to our weight distribution. And thus, when we shift off center, our rails become more engaged and we displace more water, and that way we can change direction more drastically. We also talked about allowing the board to go out and do the work for you. Notice how here on the right, the surfer is sending the board away from the body while the body hangs in limbo out on the face of the wave. This means that the surfboard has to be quickly adjusted to come back under the center. This is the maneuver portion of the turn in order for the surfer to stay upright. This is sometimes easier said than done. And that's why we jumped back on the road for some more surf skating. I found that these basic yet replicatable and very repetitive exercises of performing maneuvers as if you were actually surfing cross over really well into the waves. It helped the client get comfortable with shifting her midpoint off center in order to engage different rails of the board. We also had to talk about eye line and shoulder rotation. These are really the main factors which drive a turn. The eyes always lead the way and my surfer was constantly looking forward and down the line as opposed to back down the wave. We can also look at the leading hand, the left hand, although it goes up into the wave, it never actually points back and drives the turn back down the wave either. And this is really key because it's often the difference between a successful turn and a wipeout. Now at this point, we stumbled across some pretty magical conditions to practice in. It was a perfect A-frame scenario where some really consistent rights were coming through. And in a sport where repetition is really hard to come by, but also key for progression, we knew that everything was in place to get those first top turns happening. After a few nice attempts, I was super stoked, but I knew we could push it even further. The surfer was struggling to come off center enough to fully engage her backside rail in order to radicalize the turn. This increased engagement in her heel side rail would increase that directional change throughout the turn. I also wanted her to utilize more head and shoulder rotation to really generate some torque in the body which would drive through into the feet and then into the board and the water.
It was well and truly an intermediate turn, and if we actually compared this turn at its apex compared to the two earlier turns in the session, there was quite a big difference, namely in the shoulder rotation and the eye direction. And if we actually compare an advanced turn, it's not looking too different. I'm really so stoked to see such a dramatic improvement in the surfer's ability level in such a short amount of time. Surfing progression is typically pretty slow and it happens in stages, in short bursts. You improve a bunch and then you plateau for six months and then you improve a bunch and then you plateau for another six months. That's generally the way it happens, but with a dedication to the sport, with some good cues and technique training, I'm really stoked that things went really fast. Now there's still a way to go. The surfer's back end needs a little bit of work still and there are some positioning errors still happening, but overall that's expected. I make a lot of errors myself even as an advanced surfer, so I think the direction that we're heading in is really good. Now if you'd like to do the same and you'd like to progress your own surfing, I encourage you to check out my new Patreon membership page. It's in the description below and it's where you can access all these sorts of surfing analysis clips to assist you with your own progression in the sport too. It's super affordable and it's really fun. There's also other helpful information in the membership group as well. But of course, there's also a bunch of free content here on YouTube. Make sure you check out some of these other videos. And remember, you can join me on Instagram as well, at Kales Broccoli. Guys, thanks so much for your continued attention. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the surf. Woo! <laughs>